Hi, my name is Karen Carr. I'm a music photographer. Okay, so my mum bought my first camera um, when I was about 12 years old in 1998. It was one of those point and shoot film cameras, you know, the ones that you open up at the back and you have to actually put the film roll in. Um, you know, take your 36 uh, pictures, go along to Kodak and Kyle Street and, uh, you know, get a wee envelope and look at them, disappointed that only two had actually turned out that were any decent. Um, but it was, yeah, it was good fun. Um, but then um, I moved on to a bridge camera, bought myself a wee bridge camera about 10 years ago um, and I used that to film gigs. My husband was in a band um, taking pictures at gigs and filming them, putting them on YouTube. Uh, then I had babies and I um, was taking loads of pictures on my phone, um, editing them and uploading them to Instagram, loving it. Uh, so my husband, as a treat, bought me my first DSLR. That was the Canon 700D. Um, and yeah, that was my first cameras. <laughs> oh, so what got me uh, serious about photography? Um, well, the, the Canon came with me everywhere I went. And I really enjoyed taking pictures of family and friends and capturing those special moments. Um, and then my life with the camera stopped, my brother died and the camera just lay untouched. Um, I couldn't go near it, the creativity was just gone. But then when I got to the point where I'd actually I felt like I, you know, I wanted to pick the camera up again, um, it kind of went alongside um, a time that a, a gig was getting organised for Keir, uh, Viva La Quierdo, uh, that was at your town hall. Kier loved music, we loved music together, that was one of the things that we really uh, shared together and um, Kier's friends organised a massive gig at Town Hall and it raised thousands and thousands for Sam H. Um, it was brilliant and it was around about that time that um, I got to know Bob Williamson from Ruthless Artists and he, you know, he invited me along to a few of his gigs, got me passes for a uh, Secret Affair and the, the Vapours and that was when, you know, I started to get, to get a real thrill for music photography. Um, and of course, I took pictures at the gig. And, um, you know, I, I took pictures at other events as well. Um, yeah, so, so after that, um, I got invited along to Patch Card News mm -hmm. as a contributor. And, um, you know, from there really, uh, you know, well, I got a pass for, for my first gig up in Glasgow at the garage and just the, the, the absolute excitement about, you know, of being in the, the pit for the first time, um, you know, really, well, it really, you know, no words can actually describe how amazing it made me feel and how alive it made me feel and um, actually it was the, it was the, happiness that I was needing at that time in my life um, and it became photography became my therapy mm -hmm. um, you know and I, I needed photography I needed um, you know it got to that point where I, you know if, I, if a week didn't go by that I wasn't doing something with my camera you know, I didn't feel good didn't feel right and um, you know it was my therapy it made me feel happy again and um, you know more and more, you know, I got involved with patch cord and yeah, it, it became pretty serious. It was, you know, it was good for my mental well-being to like take pictures, um, you know, so yeah, yeah, that's when it became serious for me. But obviously the next one, um, I think you kind of answered this one to a point um, and it's uh, why music photography, mm -hmm. but I know that you do other Bits and bobs of photography because I think I identified one wedding that you done. Yeah. Uh, that said, that it just blew me away. I thought it was absolutely oh. phenomenal images. Thanks. Um, but 
but uh, why? Why music? Why music? Well, um, it's a it's a why music? Well, it's because I, I've always enjoyed going to gigs um, since I can remember going to Irvine Beach. Um, you know, at 16 and waiting for the Mannix to come on and the thrill of being like front row, you know, and, and looking at looking at the photographers and thinking, oh, that looks pretty good, you know, um, or watching um, people around me, um, like Baz McElhone, um, who, who is the guitarist in Kinky Stone. He was doing a lot of really cool video work um, and I always thought I'd quite like to have a wee go at that. Or, um, you know, friends like Derek Brown, Dell, who is no longer with us, he sadly passed away um, last year, and he was he was covering a lot of the the bandwagon, the, the sound magic events, music events, and I was all really really interested in that. Um, so for me, going to gigs was something that I really enjoyed. But when I when I was when I was there as a photographer, when I started when I picked up the camera and I got into music photography. It, it just took going to going to gigs to a whole different level. Mm. Um, it was like you're actually really closely listening to the music and watching the performers. It's 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 hard to describe, but when you're actually at a gig and you're chatting to people, you're having a wee drink, a wee dance. You know, you you're there and you enjoy the music. But when you've got a camera in your hand and you're waiting for that that you know that shot that that shot that you're just going to be like wow, I'll, you know wow. Um, and you're, you know, intently watching the performer. There's this connection between you and the, the performer. It's almost like a kind of personal thing. You know, it's just, be you know, it's, you don't really take into account, you know, much that's going around you. You know, obviously, you know, you want to get those crowd shots as well, but really you're just concentrating on the band, the music. And so it heightens the whole experience for you. Um, so, so that's why... Music photography, it just makes me feel so alive, like I said before, and I, I just, I love, you know, the, the the noise, and then the next day, reliving it all, you know, putting the, putting the, you know, whatever band you've been photographing, you know, putting them on YouTube and editing the pictures, it's so whole thrill the next day as well, you know, keeping it going, keeping it, keeping that buzz going, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh-huh. And event photography as well, you know, that same sort of thing, you know, it's the buzz, yeah. it's the thrill of capturing that, that moment. Obviously, we, we know you... I feel like I'm going to swear. I, I know you use Canon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Nikon, but I, I like Canon, I like Nikon, but I like Sony as well, and there's a few others. Um, but obviously, the next question, I know what you're going to say, what camera gear do you like to use? Okay, so in my uh, camera bag, I've, I've got a sample kit. I've, I've not got loads of money. I've only been doing this for a couple of years, so I've, um, you know, I'm slowly building up my gear. But um, I mentioned Baz before, Baz McElhone. He had, in the early days, he'd recommended uh, a wee nifty 50, a wee 50mm lens. Um, and I have to say, it's, it's amazing. I love the bokeh. I love how... Um, you know, you get your really beautiful shots, uh, really sharp focused shots, and it's so quick in those low light situations, you know, which is a music photographer's dreams, you know. Plus, it's really cheap and I love a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, so I've got that wee Nifty 50, which comes in handy a lot. And, um, you know, the, the main lens, lens that stay, stays on my camera body is the 24 to 70 uh, Canon. Um, uh, lens and uh, so versatile you know the, fo the focal range is so you know um, adaptable in different situations um, the next piece of kit that's going to join me is the 70 to 200 mm. yeah I know I'm, I'm just I, I really want to get those um, you know I really want to to go to bigger venues like the hydro and I know that you know it's better to have those bigger lenses um, so that's that's the next stage. That's what I'm saving my pennies for. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You can also get the uh, this much the Canon version, but you can get other versions like Tamron. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I bought Sigma. a uh, Sigma um, one point eight uh, art lens, mm -hmm. and uh, I was using it at one of the bandwagon events, and I just felt oh, what am 
man, what's wrong with this? It's just not quick, it's just not, um, you know, focusing quick. And I was really disappointed. So I sent it back. <laughs> saying, I don't like this, you know. Uh -huh. And I bought, I, bought, uh, I bought an 85 uh, prime lens. Don't really know why, but, um, you know, it, it, it was okay. But again, I, 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 I sold it and put it towards uh, the 25. That's an 85 1.8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's all I mm -hmm. used for a long while, the yeah. 50. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I like so. the prime lenses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what music or musician do you like to photograph? And I mean, that, 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 that for, for me is a, a difficult question I'm going to answer, because I've, no, I've yet to interview myself. But <laughs> uh, uh, what, what do you think about that one? Okay, well, um, I'm, I'm happy to photograph all sorts of genres of music. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I, th I actively try and photograph music that I don't normally listen to, because it, to, to me this is, you know, it's it's all about building those experiences up. Um, and uh, you know, uh, for example, when I was uh, I went along to Twin Hearts um, Scottish tour launch uh, last year, and Megalomatic were playing. And I'm not really, I wasn't really familiar with that style of, you know, uh, the, the vocal style and um, the, the heavy riffs. But, like, after after that gig, after Megalomatic, I was just, like, totally in love with them. And I thought, man, like, this is what it's all about. You know, it's about going along, you know, taking yourself out of that comfort zone that you're used to and just building up those um, mus musical experiences and trying new things, you know, um, you know, open your eyes to ears to different genres. My music's the eighties. I know. And it still is. I know. And you can tell by the music. Yes. Uh huh. So and not my style, but hey ho, <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, mm -hmm. you touched about getting new lenses and stuff, and the lenses that you like, and that's the question: is what what is your favourite lens? My favourite, oh, well, I've only got two to choose from, so no. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're both uh, they're both good for different situations, but I suppose the wee 50, nifty 50 uh -huh. is, uh, is probably, even though it was only, it was only £50, it was £50 mm -hmm. from eBay compared to, God, I don't even want to admit how much the, you know, the, the other one was, in case the husband's listening, <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, um, uh, for for that price, you know, it's just so so. F the quality is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I've still I've got two. I've got one point four, but it's a film lens. Yeah. Um, I use that for video work. Um, your opinion on photographers working for free? Is a touchy subject. Uh, uh, photographers working for free uh, is a controversial uh, mm -hmm. subject. In all honesty, going by my own experiences, um, I do believe that you've got to build up your portfolio and you've got to do that in whatever way you, you can. And if that means, um, you know, shooting loads of uh, local gigs, you know, at, at the local venues or whatever, um, and just going along and shooting, you know, not expecting anything in return, building up your skills, then yeah, you know, go for it. Or if you're working for a publication, you know, you get exchange exchange of services you get a pass you get to enjoy the show get to shoot your favorite acts or whatever you know um in exchange for the write up the photos there's no money involved but hey ho you know sometimes you know there's there's ways of uh, bartering you know without mm -hmm. money uh, but there comes a point where you know photographers have got to pay for equipment, you know, and time and skills are, are are not free, you know, they come at a cost. So there needs to come a point where, yes, you know, if you want images, you've got to put your money, your hand in your pocket and, you know, exchange the money. You know, you can't expect everything for free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean I'll touch on that as well. I've got a lot of opinions on it and I worked a lot for free. Um, to the point where, well, I know musicians have to as well on some occasions, but mm -hmm. um, it's really just about the, the credit that, that, that gets me. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people will not even credit you for that. So what, and simply this is the whole point of me doing this project because I do feel like as photographers get left and they go, wow, what an image, but then they concentrate mm -hmm. on the musician. That's, that's a, that's a bugbear of mine. And yeah. 
probably like and that's why know. it's called music behind the lens yeah. because my, my idea is to do like um, not just music I will be doing other um, mm -hmm. photography topics but yeah. I, I, I really think um, it's the important point is that you're credited for your, your images, you know. If I see an image online that's mine and there's no Karen Carr photography next to it, then I'm, I, I'm a wee bit peeved off, you know, and I do contact yeah. people and I have done in the past. Um, but in terms of being paid, uh, yes, there's there's a time and a place for it, definitely. Yeah. 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 I always work on the basis if they contact me. Mm -hmm. um, we can negotiate it and I'll usually ask them what's their budget. Mm -hmm. um, I'll work around it, but yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get round to that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the next question, if you were, this is a wee bit away from photography, just to break it up a little. If you, were away, if you were going away out for the night and you could choose anyone in history to have a dinner with, who would it be? Okay, so um, this is a, a personal uh, answer. Uh, it would be my my mum's dad, um, my papa David, uh, David Cunningham. He died when I was just a baby, and I didn't I didn't get to know him. Um, but from what I've heard from my my mum and my my, my granny's wife, who's uh, who actually passed away in November, there, mm -hmm. um, he was a really witty and intelligent man, and he also was quite a keen photographer. Um, and I've seen some of his. Uh, images on old slides the, and you know the old projector sort of style um, so I think we would get along and I think there's uh, a part of him you know living inside me at the moment so I, I would really I, I think I'd really enjoy going for a meal with him and uh, you know having a good old chat uh, yeah so that's, that's my answer <laughs> there uh -huh. I like it mm -hmm. um, okay is there anything that you would never leave home without I mean, yes, like, photography uh, based or whatever, but this would be, be anything, really. Uh, underwear? <laughs> yeah, that's just true. No, I'm only joking. Um, yeah. That's a given, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mobile phone. Right. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't leave the the house without my mobile. Sad state of affairs, but I've seen myself getting to work and forget my mobile, driving home to get it. Like, um, you know, it's the world we live in, you know, yeah. it's an extension of my hands. Uh, I use it for all sorts. I wish I wasn't so attached to it, but hey-ho, that's, that's I think life. mine would be my house key. Aye, your house key. <laughs> so I get back in. <laughs> Don't tell me all your answers. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's, I'm just reminding myself so I can look back and say, right, I will say that. <laughs> so, so, that, so we'll go back on to the photography part and... It's more really towards music. I know that, I know that you do other uh, photography, but um, as music based, this project. Okay, so what's your strategy for getting the best photographs at a music concert? Okay, so a music concert. Um, okay, so be prepared. Make sure your kit bag's all you know looking good, with your battery charged, and your um, you know the you do a wee bit of um, research on the venue beforehand, and you you know choose the right lenses to bring. Um, and you've got your um, memory card all sorted, all ready to go. Uh, good to do a wee bit of research on the band as well, you know, like find out, you know, how they perform, um, so you can try and predict those, you know, those shots. Um, also, I was given a really good piece of advice when I first started. Um, you know, when you're in the pit, try and, try and stay calm, don't uh, shoot and spray. Or spray and pray. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you take your time. Take your time to get. You know, you look at your lighting. What sort of lighting you, you know is around you? Um, dial in your settings, and then just try and like size up your shot. You know, don't panic and just start. You know, burst. Sh you know, burst uh, shots. You know, just try and compose yourself. And you know, uh, it's better that than going home with. Uh, you know. A thousand images that you've, you know, you you spend all day trying to weed through, you know, looking for the, the, the best shots and then editing them takes too much time up. So just like stay calm, try and get about 25, 30 sh really, really good shots rather than just, you know, go wild. <laughs> <laughs> right, you mentioned at the beginning about your very first gig through Patch Club News. Um, and obviously that was with Patch Club News, but can you remember the first music concert or event you ever worked at? Well, I, I would probably class that one as the, the first proper 
mm-hmm. you know, gig that I had a first proper pass, you know. Uh, it was a venue in Glasgow, the garage. So I can remember it was a really sunny day um, and I, I, I arrived far too early because I was so keen mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm waiting outside um, and seeing the queue start to form and getting a bit nervous uh, and then got to the point where I was like, saying to the bouncers, hi, I'm Karen, <laughs> I'm here from Patch Guard News, uh, you know, I'm covering photography tonight. All right, okay, just go on up those stairs, as if it was nothing. I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm away up those stairs uh, to the wee booth and the guy's giving me all the banter and all that. So that kind of made me feel at ease. Uh, but then I found myself in the pit and I got really nervous again. Uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, but I managed to get some all right shots. Uh, but I was really nervous about those shots and I didn't think they were all right. Uh, but looking back on them now, they're, they're okay first time, but looking back on them, um, you know, at the time I was like, oh no, they're rubbish. I'm never going to be asked to do this again. I remember it well because I remember you contacted me and you were really excited about it. And I just, for me, mm-hmm. I love giving people opportunity. Mm-hmm. And that's where I am at the moment. And this project for me, I know I'm mm-hmm. diverse, it's just so we can try and get back on what we're talking about, is the fact that this is giving somebody else as well, this is giving you a chance uh, well, to Well, from that moment, from that moment of being in the pit, I was pretty much hooked. Mm-hmm. That was me. I was no turning back. It's like music photography was as was something that I was... That's, that, that's it. Um, yeah, so... I remember that gig really well, uh, and I've got a photo uh, later that I chose to talk about. So, so this photo here was from my first um, photo pass. Um, it's an Australian rock band um, called In Hearts Wake, and the crowd were absolutely mental. They were so they were so into it. There was oh, there was all sorts of crowd surfing, and there was the the, the, the pit troll, you know, like, you know, b- bouncing off everybody in the in the pit, you know, they were getting proper violent. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really good fun. Um, I, but after that gig, I was so tired. I remember walking down Suffield Street and texting you saying, I'm, I'm away home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm knackered, I'm in my bed. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't go to my bed. I right. drove home, back to air, and I put the MacBook on. And I sat and edited the pictures because I was yep. so on a high. I was on an absolute high from, from, from being being there, you know, um, and doing what I love, taking the pictures, you know, and, and I wanted. I was really. I wanted to see the outcome, you know, the results of that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't sleep much that night, but, <laughs> but I. I was I was quite pleased when I got your message through the next day. That was quite encouraging. <laughs> yeah, there you and go. Then, yeah. Uh, so I mean, while we're on touched on your I got you to choose five of your best images and that's we'll just move on to that and uh, we'll take a spray. So obviously I haven't asked you to put on from one to five or whatever, it's just really to pick five that you can tell me a story about. So what would be your next one you'd like to chat to about? Well we'll just uh, flick on and see. Okay, so um, so this kind of leads on to from wh- where we were at in terms of uh, being in the pit. This is a picture from the Barrowlands. We can see the, the famous scary uh, ceiling there. I love this picture uh, because, well, I love the, the perspective. I love the kind of the lines, you know, that, where the eyes drawn along the crowd here. And there's this guy right in the middle, and he's just, he's just so in the moment. He's so uh, excited. It was actually DMAs. Um, it was the DMAs show, and they're they're kind of they're an Australian band as well, but they're quite Brit poppy. So you've got all the all the lads, you know, uh, in the crowd there. And uh, what I loved about this picture is that you know everybody's just so in the moment. But also, I can remember being there with my earplugs in, and you next to the speak, speaker stacks at the Barris, and uh, the the energy coming from what was coming out the speakers and what was coming at the other side from the crowd, 
and I was in the middle and then we got the band on and I was just like, this is, this is a life, I love this. <laughs> this is like nowhere on earth, you know, um, and only a few people get to experience that. Um, so, so that's why I chose this picture. Plus I love black and white. Um, I mean, it's not the most technically accurate picture, you know, it's a little bit out of focus and, you know, um, but I just felt like it captured that energy. I think um, we, all, we talk about sh images being sharp, but I don't think it's important. In yeah. a lot of images, I think it's a part. It's, a, it's a important about what you capture, mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything, and, and and sometimes motion blur and, and and different things is actually what you're seeing rather than uh, not in focus. Um, mm -hmm. um, and it's and like I say, it's quite important cause to you. Uh, like I say, for me, being on the other side of that pit and capturing that and seeing those, that energy and that fun, because I had that at the Prodigy, so... Yeah, yeah, I can um, imagine that would have been... Uh, and I was in hoots with some of them, and they yeah. just... Mm -hmm. the, the energy dancing, it just... Yeah, I've seen myself actually stand up, mm -hmm. you know, in front of the barrier, on the, the wee step, and shooting over the crowd. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially, it's really good to do that at the Barrowlands, because you can just see right to the back of the, the room. It's an um, amazing venue. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, what would be your what's the next one what's you've the got next there? One? Yeah. Okay, so we'll just go back home here. Okay, so um, this is a band. This is my first band promo shot uh, mm -hmm. shoot with a band called Savalis, and um, you've got four young guys who have all been in different uh, bands before. Uh, Baz Fisher. And Jordan were in the and Rory, I think. We're all in the trips and um, the trips with along with James Mackay played at um, the Viva La Quirdo gig and James and Kia were really good friends. And following that gig, um, Baz got in touch because they, they, they were releasing a, a single. Um, and their manager at the time, they'd got some shots done, their manager wasn't quite happy with them. So Baz had said, Karen, do you mind doing some um, photography with us? So, yeah, uh, why not? Do you know, it's another experience. So um, we went down to kind of a underpass at uh, Alloy. I'm sure it's been used hundreds of times with different um, bands. But um, I was quite happy with this shot, uh, shoot and this shot in particular. Just because you know it's it's just just captures you know young guys going on their their road their journey um, and you know never know where they're going to end up. Mm. Um, yeah, so some of the leading lines and the like the, mm -hmm. the, the tone and the colour of it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just uh, as I say, it is a quite a, for me that's an it because the lads are Ayrshire as well, and yeah. I know that's an Ayrshire location mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. well, and I've been there the many times. I have shot the Risk down there in the Seaside Sons. Mm -hmm. and well, Jason, I've got a very funny video of Jason walking through there the April. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. But I never used, but yeah. I, I must get it to him. But again, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice picture, and it's just the fact that you can see... They didn't know I was taking that picture that. either. They were walking back because they were walking, they were, were doing a... Um, you know, a, a walk to me, and I was taking images them walking to me as a four. But then, you know, I caught this as they were going back to do that again. I made them do it about four or five times, <laughs> um, and and this was the one that's at, that they actually used on their, their gig posters and, and on their um, CD cover. So um, I, I chose this as well because it actually opened up a few doors in terms of doing other band promo shots. Um, working with Soldier On, who another band that played Viva La Cierto, a band from Irvine. Um, I did a, a photo shoot with them, kind of to coincide with their, their video. Um, and it was great to, to be working alongside uh, their videographer, Matthew Wood, who's just really, really, I just love his work, it's fantastic. Um, so I was doing stills as he was recording. Um, and. Uh, I've done a, you know, it was great to see um, my work again used on a CD cover, and I, I released alongside the the, the track. Twin led to Twin Heart, worked with them, did a wee bit of uh, promo work with them, but also uh, artwork for their EP. Uh, Laurie Smith, 
um, the Ranzas. Uh, yeah, so it's it opened up doors. Yeah. Um, and there's doors still opening. Yeah. As speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would be your next one then? Your next image. Okay. Let's go to the next one. So, this is um, Steve Wickham. Steve is a long standing member of the Water Boys, but he also um, played fiddle on U2's Sunday Bloody Sunday and also on Sinead O'Connor's uh, Nothing Compares to You. Two songs that I absolutely adore and I adore The Water Boys. Um, Fisherman's Blues is a really special song to me, I just love it. Um, I grew up on The Water Boys, my mum's a, a big fan. Uh, and she's also she also knows Mike Scott, and Mike Scott invited my mum and um, uh, my mum's husband and my husband along to their show at the Barrowlands, and Mike Scott organised a, a photo pass as well. And I was the only photographer in the pit, and I was like, "This is strange. What's going on?" But it later turned out that he's, he's not that keen on photographers in the pit. So you know, it was a really special um, it was a really special gig for me. Plus the fact we got to go backstage after the gig and sit with them in the in the the Barrowlands um, green room or whatever you call it, <laughs> and uh, you know, sit and chatted away to Steve Wickham and the and the rest of Mike Scott and the rest of the Water Boys. It was a really great night. Um, so I, I just love this image as well because I love I love the well it's quite close up. Don't mm. normally get that in the Barrowlands, um, and I love the, the warm colours um, and just he looks really really cool uh, and I just I just love the way he played his, his um, fiddle it was just really it was really rocky you know he was really um, you know it was, it was a great sound he was making that night he was really getting into it so uh, and I was mesmerised by him all night you know I just couldn't keep my eyes off him when I was in the pit, in the pit and when I was watching it from the, the crowd uh, and I was just so pleased that this picture turned out the way it did because it's one, it's one of my favourites. Yeah, I could, well, I like I like the colours on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, I, I photographed the Water Boys as well, and it's a violinista photograph, but I don't know if it was him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Um, it's the same image, but I caught them at the Wickerman. But I was mm -hmm. like you, I focused on the fiddler. Yeah. And I tend to go with that with the fiddlers. Yeah. There's something about mm -hmm. people that play violins which I, I mm -hmm. want to learn. That's a secret. Yeah, yeah. I'll not put that in. <laughs> um, but I'm going to be learning it soon. Um, uh, but there's just something about it. Um, and it's it's the way, the way he plays it as well. It's almost like a distorted violin, uh -huh. you know, because he's, you know, it's it's quite folksy, but yeah. there's uh, there's a real rocky edge to it. Yeah, and I mean, I think from music from years years well before we were on this earth, violins were the, the a piece of kit that they used for music. Mm -hmm. Kings and Queens and yeah, stuff, yeah, so. uh, and it's still good to see it coming out. And that, mm -hmm. I say I focus on it. Uh, it's the same at Rewind this year. I had uh, was it Let's Rock? It was Let's Rock, I think it was. Uh, last year, we did five females all playing it in the line, and they'll put the, the bow up in the air. Mm -hmm. So you're always waiting for something. Can I? Yeah. But I mean that that's a, a beautiful picture of that. Um, and I like how it's like it's quite it's kind of low key as well, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. So the next image, um, this is, I think this is my last image as well, um, this was um, this was the Cribs at King Tut's December 2017 and this is when I was starting to get passes for gigs for bands that I was actually like fans of, like you know I was, you know, um, before that it was the Libertines that the, um, the Grand Hall and Kilmarnock like I, I, I've been a fan of the Libertines like for years and years and years and not so much now but when I was younger and um, with the Cribs, the Cribs just remind me of being at uni and being carefree and having you know men's needs, women's needs, whatever um, you know be safe, I'm a realist like these are all songs that I absolutely adore um, and to, to be at the, the King King Tut's room, you know, upstairs in that wee tiny room, and it's absolutely jam packed um, with fans that know every single word to, to every single song. And it was a set list of about 12, uh, 12 or 14 songs, just one after the other, what hit after hit. And the crowd were just singing along every single word. 
and the atmosphere in that room was absolutely electric. Um, you couldn't beat it. And I do like this image. Uh, they're quite a fast band, so it was, it was a difficult gig in terms of photography and the light wasn't that great. It was quite dark, uh, except for these wee lights around the, the drum kit and the, the speakers there. Um, so to get this quite well lit, was I was quite happy with that, you know. Uh, and the fact that I've caught the drummer, you know, in mid mid air action, you know, shot. Um, I and you know the. I just I think it looks quite cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's one of these venues. It's mm -hmm. great to photograph, but it's really really difficult. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of challenges in your way because the lighting's not great. It is better it, from when yeah. I first went. It wouldn't that great, but. As I've, I've been there recently and I've noticed that the lighting is getting a little bit better now. Yeah. Uh, again, the drummers, they're always at the back, they're always dark. Mm -hmm. But again, you want to get that activity from a drummer when you're photographing them. Mm -hmm. um, I love the colours, I love how it's got a vignette type of look around about yeah, it. And you start yeah. blue and mm -hmm. the, the reds are really standing out. Yeah. Um, I love colouring images. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like black and white, but there's something about mm -hmm. colour images that, that draws me in. Yeah. Um, and a, and a lot of people feel that they need to get every band member in when they take mm -hmm. a shot sometimes, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just getting that, that mm -hmm. few members in mm -hmm. um, and showing that bit of movement as well in the image is, is great because we can always take the same picture where they're just static mm -hmm. and I think they get a little bit boring for me. Yeah. Uh, but no, I like it when you get an image and that's why when I'm getting to select five, mm -hmm. is you can really find where you can talk about it. And I found it really hard to, to pick five. <laughs> when you asked me to do do that, I was like, oh no, how, how am I going to do that? I've just five images. So I got a wee glass of wine and I sat down, with, opened up the MacBook, stuck the external drive in, going through all the pictures. And I was like, you know, there's, there's gigs in there that were really special to me, um, like the 10th anniversary of Midnight Organ Fight. And um, that gig, well, it was it was it was Scott Hutchinson's last gig, so um, you know it was really well uh, that that really affected me. Do you know the the fact that he died soon after, um, and so th so that was a special gig being there and sharing that with the band and with all their fans. Um, who again were singing every single word along to that album start to finish. Um, yeah, so and the, and the, but there's loads of other um, you know gigs as well that, and and band promo shots like the Kinks Experience. You know, I I, I, I had some great pictures. Personally, I thought there were there was a couple of really good ones um, that I'd done with them, um, and it was the first time I'd had a, a band in a, a proper photography studio using photography lights. I was doing it as part of a um, course. Ricky Mackay had asked me to do a shoot with them and I was just so happy so I was doing a course at the same time and I thought, great, you could be my model, you know, come along. Um, and so they did. All five of them turned up and then got changed in the classroom next door into their red suits and they're all like coming in, you know. Um, Everybody else was like, "What's happening here?" <laughs> and so it was really, it was really, um, it was good fun, really, really good fun. So yeah, there, there was loads of, there's been loads of pictures that I could have included, but you know, five, yes, yeah, for five. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was one of the reasons trying to make. I wasn't trying to trip anyone up, but mm -hmm. I mean, through through this video, I will be showing a, a number of your images anyway. Right, so is that your five images? That's it. Right. Okay. Just, that's the Cribs. Hey, Steve Wickham. Savalis okay. in Hearts Wake and the mm -hmm. cow shot from the Barrowlands. So we're at, do you have any plans to travel abroad and maybe photograph a festival uh, there or any kind of concert? Because let's like, say you want to go and that photograph a big band. Right. Travelling abroad um, and photographing a, a tour day abroad in Europe for example, that sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, but with I I, I, to, be, to be honest, I don't have any plans to do that. Um, what I do want to do though is to cover a festival in Scotland. I do have plans, I want to try and pin that down and get that done. Plans, Matt? Possibly. 
possibly. I'll try again. Yeah. Up here running. <laughs> or maybe join you at Electric Fields if you'll yeah. have me. Mm. Go to um, a wee festival um, up Loch Dunway, uh, Knock and Gorick. Yeah, I remember that. So one. I, I, I didn't take my camera this year, but um, I'd quite like to do mm. that this day. Uh, Last year, sorry, but I'd quite like to do it this year. Yeah. Okay. Um, how critical are you of your own work? Um, well, I am critical to a certain extent. I do want to produce um, high quality images. I have high expectations, you know, I want, I want, uh, you know, if we're doing a shoot, I want um, the client to feel like it's you know professional you know and they get a professional result and um, so you know I, I do have I'm critical in terms of meeting those expectations um, you know but the, I think the most important thing is that you know I've had fun um, taking the image mm -hmm. and experiencing um, the whole you know the, the gag or, or whatever you know it's all about the experience for me mm -hmm. as well as making sure that you know I produce images that the musicians are happy with. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're all tempted to do that. I know that I, I, I'm very critical of myself. Um, and I'm always thinking um, how they're going to feel. I take them into consideration, certainly if they, they have a, a run through the images. And I've had experience where they've not liked some of them, but they've liked others. Mm -hmm. um, and you might like it, but they don't, so you have to go that way. Um, yeah. Excuse me. So, um, and it's the same way. Like, so you get some people liking your work. I don't get too fixated with that, but um, it's nice to know that people out there follow you. you Definitely, know? and that's what that is. What it's all about, you know. That is the yeah. We we do it because we love it, but we want other people to to mm -hmm. love what we're doing as well. You know, it's that feedback that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this question will probably relate to people who do the job as a full time basis, but. I'm sure, I'm sure you do because you get paid as well, so, um, and I always see a, a photographer gets paid for a work, they work as a photographer. Some photographers might dis dispute that because they sometimes do it as a full-time job and that's fine, but uh, you get part-time work in, 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 in all industries, so I see myself as a part-time uh, full like freelance uh, paid yeah. professional photographer. Mm -hmm. So the question relates to if you are not working, and I know you're doing another job, is music photography, what would you be doing? And, and, and that there's not really to relate to what your actual current job is, it's what you would be doing if it wasn't photography, if you know what I mean. If, well... Do you think you would be doing? When, it, when, I'm, not, when I'm not doing music photography, I'm a mum and a lecturer. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I can't really imagine not doing music photography. It's like mm -hmm. who, who I am now, do you know? So I think... I saw that question and I thought it was really difficult. Um, you know, what what would I do? Uh, and I didn't really do much before as a hobby. Like I, I'm not one of these people that were sport, you know, sporty and you know, um, did I don't know swimming or what whatever you know for six years and got to a certain level with that. Um, you know, so I found something now that I really you know I enjoy learning about and you know developing myself in. Can you tell us anything about yourself that may surprise your friends and family? No, because that would be telling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. So I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> right, so, well, well, obviously we've already touched on that, but um, about the advice that you were given. Uh, so this is really going on. What advice would you give to inspiring photographers out there if they wanted to get started in music photography? Yeah, just try and get um, out to as many gigs as you can and build up your experience. You know, local shows, um, contact local bands, uh, get in touch and, you know, offer, you know, uh, to take some live photography at their, their shows or even some band promo shoots. Um, you know, just build up a, a you know, b b make yourself known in the, the local music scene. Um, but also follow follow other photographers and, and check out the amazing work that's going out going on out there. You know, uh, the UK, uh, Scotland. We've got amazing, talented music photographers. Yourself, Martin, um, Stuart Westwood, Baza Mills, um, Paul Husband, uh, Tom Barnes. Like, there's you know the standard out there is just um, amazing. So go on social media and follow what they're doing and get some you know 
get excited about the possibilities that might you know you might end up yeah. doing. I've met top farmers as, mm -hmm. as a gentleman. That's hence why I've got the the tether unit in the pelly box. Yeah, yeah. I've, I got a hold to play oh, with his, so I did. Yeah. I've helped him on the photography mm -hmm. show and, it, and he's one of the guys I'm inspired to. Mm -hmm. I'll talk a lot about them. Man. Oh, definitely, I love yeah. his work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, Paul husband's work is just yeah. it's great as well. You know, it's so atmospheric and and the characters that he's working with. You know, you can it just um, you know it just it sets up his, his scene so well. Um, mm. Yeah, it's great. So so um, you have any other projects underway at the moment? Okay, so um, I've got a project coming up with um, local uh, DJ and producer. Um, Jason Curry, um, we're going to be working together uh, on some promotional shots. Um, Jason's got a, a track out um, along with another DJ, Richard um, Pride. So um, it's exciting time times for him, and I'm really you know looking forward to coming on board and and helping him out at this you know time in his uh, DJ career. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's coming up soon. Where can people or the, the followers on, online or anywhere other media can find you? Yeah, you can find me online. My website is um, karencarphotography.co.uk and um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, all the usual suspects. All right. Yeah. We'll put the links at the end of the, the footage thanks. as well. So, what's... There's a, there's, a, there's a few questions that I haven't even I haven't given you, and I'm going to just put them to you. But no, but I'll, it's just really the question. Is, the question is, um, how you how has this made you feel? This whole uh, being interviewed by another photographer or videographer, as I sometimes get called. Um, not comfortable anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I much prefer being um, behind the camera. Uh, pick up my camera and. You know, I, that's, I feel really good and yeah, it's, you know, I'm going to kind of automatic mode. But sitting here, I'm like, oh, what do I look and, like? And I think from what that, am I saying? Am I talking the water? You know? Yeah, and I think from that point, this is, uh -huh. this is the feeling that I wanted to get you to feel because mm. you can understand how people feel when they're on that other side of yeah, the camera. Yeah, definitely. It's an experience for me, yeah. I'll, yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you feel about being part of an exhibition? That I'm maybe holding. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I'd really enjoy that. Right. Uh, yeah. It may well be more than five photographs. You'll get to do that <laughs> again. <laughs> okay, Good. it may well be the ones that you've picked because we've got a year where you may take some more pictures mm -hmm. and that might be featured. But then, oh, it's still it's still a difficult task is to narrow it down to yeah. to and what to to me like a, a, an image might be really special and I connect with it, but somebody else might not understand that meaning and, and not really you know see why I think that's a really good photo yeah. you know so you're really kind of braving your soul there you know it's like it's really a, it's a difficult process and finally mm -hmm. is obviously I've selected you for because I think you're phenomenal thanks Martin you are part of my patch club team it's been difficult for me as well to select photographers based on friends and that type of thing and I have identified some people who people might not know um, and I'm wanting to try and get those photographers who may well not be known at all. Um, there is some active photographers out there who are active at all the festivals mm. like Transmit and the mm. Arctic Fields and mm. so who would you think you should, it should be part of this project to be videoed do you think? Mm -hmm. Who would you suggest? Uh, well I've noticed, um, you know, I've noticed couple of photographers that I've actually came across uh, when working uh, the likes of uh, the Barrowlands. Um, one is called Alice Haddon. Uh, I see, I follow her work on Instagram. I think it's amazing. Um, you know, really atmospheric shots and um, she's covered some of the, the festivals this year, Transmit being one. Um, and there, there's another guy called uh, Sean Francis that I think his work's really cool as well. Um, he does a lot of tour work with bands, something that I'd really love to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring the two kids along with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get yeah. them with cameras. Yeah, yeah they could be your, uh, They've got a modis. B tech camera, so that'll do. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, that's, that's great. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you would like to add to the video? 
No, thanks, Martin. Thanks no. for um, inviting me along to do yeah, this. I no really way, enjoyed thank you. it. Thank you. Even I felt uncomfortable at times, but hey ho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, over, over, overall, I really enjoyed it. So, Good. thanks very much. Good experience. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>